Hi everyone, Electro here. Now this video is um, to complement a couple of videos that Jason Verbelli has done. Also a guy called Wood, Brass and Glass. Uh, what they're doing is they're cutting magnets and they're trying to basically get a certain kind of field pattern uh, from the cuts that they've made. Um, I've been looking at their videos and uh, I thought I'd do a how-to on how I cut my magnets because of recent I've been able to improve my technique and well, as you can see here I can get pretty good cuts now and they're clean they're smooth on the side with minimal chipping and I can go as deep as I want and they're relatively quick and easy to, to do a uh, couple of things you'll need one is just a bit of sponge. Now I've mentioned this before in my previous videos and what I do is just wet it so the sponge has got moisture in it and that's what I'll use as my, my water source when I'm cutting my magnets. The other thing I've got is a, a sintered diamond disc in this case. Now you can get sintered diamonds in all different shapes and sizes and everything like that but for this particular um, scenario the disc is what I'll use and what I want to show you is just how I cut it and the speed I use etc. So just to cut a straight line I mean if you really had a, an intricate design to follow what you could do is draw it on here with a permanent marker and then either use a disc or uh, a different shaped bird to cut it out but just to keep things simple today I'll just use a disc and just do a couple of straight lines. Now there's the water I've always got to make sure that it's not dripping wet, but it's, it's wet. Now, how I do that is actually contact the sponge on the face of the disc as it's cutting. Now... Also, I control my speed and I don't go too fast because speed builds up heat and in a ceramic magnet, it's not what you want. Now, you can see there... Hang on, I'll just... I don't know if you can see that, but that's spraying quite a bit of water, which is getting from the um, the sponge. But there, as you can see, it's made quite a, a deep cut already. Uh, that bit in the middle there was just where I uh, stuffed up. But I'll just do another cut just to make it. Now, also use light pressure. The more pressure you use, the more susceptible it is to chipping. So if you use just Super light pressure. Just go back and forth. And again, you can see there. Now, you can keep going with that, and you'll get something like that. And if you just take your time and do it smooth, like I said, you can get a pretty good edge. And the finish itself, too, is quite good. You can get a similar finish to that. Um, now, with that covered, another idea I got about um, actually imprinting wave patterns on a magnet is um, I thought about this. Now, this is just aluminium foil. I'll put over the face of the magnet like that. Now, I'll take you guys over to where my TIG welder is. Remember that. Hang on. I just turn the gas on. The yeah, on there. Turn the machine itself on. Choose the setting. Now I can remove this from its holder. The earth wire there so it contacts. And what I can do now oops, is just now see how that blasted now what have we effectively done? Now, 
what I've effectively done is melted the aluminium right on the surface of the magnet. Now what I'm thinking with this is because of the current density there and the melting of the aluminium etc, um, the electrical field there might have the power to change the aligned particles in the magnet. Now if I can do that effectively, I'll be able to imprint a pattern because if this area here has poles lined up in a different direction than everywhere else, that'll show up different on a magnetic field and it should also produce either a, um, a pulse or a dip. But anyway, I don't have magnetic field at the moment, uh, magnetic field viewing tape at the moment, so I can't really view anything like this. But um, just an idea, anyone out there who's got the resources, etc., might be able to check this out. So anyway, post your thoughts and um, bye for now.